going on there guys this is Chris here coming to you with another edition of my alone zone as always I am the alone master of my domain and thank you for spending a few minutes with me coming to you from chilly chilly Pensacola Florida it's been very warm for the past Oh, I'd say five days or so with temperatures are up in uh, near 70 degrees <sighs> and uh, today the highs are only expected to be around uh, 48 but the wind chill in the lower 40s and we got an arctic cold front headed this way and as most of you know I'm into weather my favorite season is winter for whatever it is I like cold weather it doesn't get cold enough here for me honestly but Cold weather just elevates my mood when it's warm and it's hot in the summertime. I'm miserable. I just worse than I am. I don't like being out at all. I don't because you know, I, you know, in the summer I sweat. And I don't like that feeling. But in the winter time, in the fall, it's just cool. It feels good. I feel enhanced. Uh, my body feels better for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, I got this. Uh, Arctic cold fronts headed this way and uh, starting with Wednesday the highs are going to be about 50 and then Wednesday night low around 20 with wind chills in the teens Thursday the highs only going to be about 38 degrees here which is cold for this you know region Thursday night the lows are going to be in the upper teens with wind chills in the single digits and then by friday it starts to warm back up but still it's going to be cold and i love it so yesterday uh i made the video on the passing of legendary sports broadcaster stuart scott a man that i've watched my entire life a guy that made it enjoyable and cool to watch sports highlights now in that video I did kind of get, uh, well, I did say something that might be a little controversial about no matter what we do in this life, no matter how many people we touch, no matter what legacy we leave, we'll be remembered when we die, but at the end of the day, that's just it. We're going to die. And it sucks. And it really, really does. And why can't we live longer? You know, especially for a guy like that. To, to beat cancer twice and then when he got it the third time I believe he was diagnosed with it maybe late last year earlier this year it's just wow you know and this one he didn't beat and apparently he had been doing really bad um, from what I can gather from hearing all the uh, remembrances of him it uh, appears to me that his you know friends knew that you know this was probably going to be his last trip to the hospital um and he hadn't been in contact you know they would try to contact him and you know he didn't text and, and, and let you know talk to him as much and, uh, one of the sportscasters uh merrill hodge on uh, espn said this morning you know Stuart scott kicked cancer's butt twice but he couldn't kick it the third time and it, a guy that was so full of life so like uplifting such a, a just a, a, an amazing man friend and father would be there for people would help other people in their time of need even when he was doing bad but if he can't beat cancer as positive of a person as he is what does that do for the regular Joe who may not be the most positive person, who may not be the best spirit? How does that do for them? And see, this guy, Stuart Scott, he, he worked out. He took care of his body through the cancer. But that's just it. There's treatment for cancer, but there is no known cure. Yes, you can get cancer and go through the treatments, and it can go away, but... There's no guarantee that it won't come back. And it just, it, it does bug me that why in the world we just end up dying. We end up in a grave. Or 
cremated. And I don't know, maybe it was the wrong thing to say, but I was angry, you know. I don't even know the guy, but being a, a huge sports fan, this touched me. I mean, I wake up Sunday morning. Uh, I wake up a little earlier than I normally do. It was uh, around, uh, well, Sunday I usually like to sleep in a little bit because I don't have to get up and go to get my medication. Um, so I wake up around 10, and the power uh, kept going off and it was fluttering and you could hear the transformer sound like it was surging and gonna blow well it didn't thankfully but that woke me up so I uh I get up I use the restroom and then I cut the television on because it's you know ESPN it's playoff football and I knew that uh, NFL uh you know the, the pre-game coverage was gonna be on ESPN which I like to watch and as soon as I cut it on this Chris Berman, legendary, been with ESPN pretty much from the start. He was in a somber voice. And I didn't know really what was going on. The next thing that popped up, Stuart Scott, 1965-2015. And immediately. And this is for a guy, like I said, I, don't, I didn't know him. He's just a legend. He's famous. He was famous. And I can't believe I'm saying that in past tense, but... I immediately just the tears started blowing down my face. Lost an icon of the sports broadcasting world. And more importantly, two beautiful daughters, Taylor and Sydney, 119 and 115, both lost their dad. And that's the thing in all of this. This man did not get to see to live his daughters get married and possibly have a family of their own. He did not live to be a grandfather. He was taken away at 49. And that's why I said what I said about him. No matter what we do in this life, we're just going to die. Why can't we live forever? Why can't there be scientists come up with a way for cell rejuvenation to where you can continue to rejuvenate your body's cells so that you don't age as maybe you can't live forever but maybe there should be a way with all this technology and all this science for us to be able to prolong our lives like i said cell rejuvenation to rejuvenate the cells your organs in your body get old replace them why in the world can't maybe, yeah you can't have a heart transplant liver lung all that stuff but why can't, can't there be a way, like, okay, they, they say you can't have a brain transplant. Well, obviously, for, there's reasons for that, but maybe a way to somehow record your memories. I know this is a stretch, and this is probably never going to happen, but just some way to keep the body longer, to live longer. And especially when it comes to cancer, I believe there is experimental research and in, 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 in cell replenishing to get all the negative cells and fight them with fresh new younger cells and i don't know this but the fact of the matter is i cannot equate cancer to mental illness but mental illness is a disease of the brain the brain controls the body so while it's not an illness that's you know going to well it could lead to death it, it could but it's not like I, i'm going through you know chemotherapy or anything like that so it's not on the same level but let me tell you something if you watch that speech of uh, the Stuart Scott in that speech he says there is absolutely no way possible that he could have made it and survived the two previous cancer uh, it's the cancer you know when he had it there's absolutely no way, and even this recent one, before he passed, could do it without support, without his friends and his family. The fact that he had someone, when he needed to cry, he had someone he could call and just cry. That there was absolutely no way he would have made it as long as he did without support. I have been a key proponent in saying this about my life. How I made. Now, look, I understand that people have my phone number and I've had the option to talk to these people. It's just, it's, I don't know how it would go over. 
You know, because I don't know these people in real life. So how's it going to go over if I'm really down and I'm crying? Which I do frequently. How, how would it go if I call one of these guys crying? You know, would they want to talk to me? Would they even be willing? See, I'm not saying that's the only call I would make. But there are freaking times when I'm just so down and so like, ugh. I just want to have someone that I can call and just bill it to. And I just don't know if I would have that. And so, anyways, it's it's the key with any disease, no matter from of the diseases of a smaller scale to the grandest, worst diseases. You must have support unless you have an amazing willpower. And even if you do, I seriously doubt that with some of these illnesses you could make it without the support and to have that network of friends to lean on to be there for you how amazing and I've said this before would it be you know not just to call somebody and cry on their shoulder over the phone but to have that in real life to have somebody that could come to my place or I can go to theirs and just spend time with them when I'm super low not having that sucks and it's not just me anyone with a mental illness especially with mental illness with the depression and the anxiety and all the other issues. You don't have friends, you don't have support. It's a fight that you, like I said in the video, fighting the winless battle. I, I feel at times like I'm fighting a winless battle. And, you know, with Stuart Scott passing away, it should motivate me, him fighting through the cancer that the way he did, but he did it with help. Yeah, he, he fought it. He, he pushed forward, but he had help along the way. Now, I, I want to fight this damn thing. and Every time I have done better, something always came along and put me back down. And not having someone to lean on again, I, I keep going back to it. So should the Stuart Scott think since he was a legend and I followed him and because of him it made watching sports highlights cool you know I told the story of going to sleep at night with the TV on and listening to him and Rich Eisen uh, former ESPN uh, sports center anchor they did a late night sports center there in the mid late 90s um, you know just if I wasn't into watching wrestling you know I would have the sports center going and hearing his amazing calls on them you know the highlights especially the basketball ones It was, you know, put me, you know, I went to sleep, you know, enjoying, you know. It made me, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but if, if I'm watching something or something on the TV that I enjoy, it may helps me sleep. And fall asleep. And just the fact that I've watched this man most of my life so far, and he's gone, and how it touches me. And should I use it as motivation to do better? and fight this thing and keep fighting yes I absolutely absolutely and he had cancer I just have a mental illness but without the, the support and the network of friends I just don't know if I'm ever going to be able to win this thing yeah there are people out there on the internet that, that I can talk to and they get offended when I say that you know it's awesome but still it's not the same as in you know my daily life and they get upset about that like I'm saying that they don't mean something they do they mean a lot to me it's just totally different when you have the the ability to, 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 to be with people in person which is something I have absolutely never had but I just wanted to, to talk a little more about Stuart Scott and just you know clarify you know me saying yesterday about you know no matter what we do we're just gonna die because I was angry at that and that's still how I feel but maybe I should have said it a little differently and the fact of the matter is and I'm gonna say this towards right, right now because I'm coming towards the end of the video here but if you have any friends in your life you have family no matter if you get along with them no matter you know if Things aren't always rosy with them. Let me tell you right now. When you, if you don't have that like I do not have that, you don't realize how much you want it. And if you do have it, 
let them know as much as you can how much they mean to you how important they are in your life you may not tell them all the time but acknowledge them let them know how much you appreciate the fact that they're in your life and because you never know when either they are gone or you're gone and, and the saddest thing of it all is you pass on and your loved ones are left to be without you and it's not hurt they, you don't understand it so just make sure if you have people in your life you have that support system don't take it for granted if you don't have it, you don't you don't know how hard it is. And it's amazing that I'm even still breathing and talking right now. It really is. And even without the support, I have changed my tone about dying. But at the end of the day, again, just take a step back to let anybody in your life that's been there for you even if it's not all the time or sometimes it seems as though they don't get it or they don't understand the fact of the matter is to have friends to have family it's you're fortunate just let them know you know tell them as much as you can because we're not guaranteed tomorrow and it could all be over with a snap of a finger to Sydney and Taylor Scott, I don't know you, but your father changed the world of sports broadcasting. He touched millions upon millions of people. He was a great man. I know he was a great father. In his speech, he talked about how he fought so hard for his daughters. That's why he. That's one of the main reasons he was fighting for those two girls, and he fought as long as he could. And I know you two are hurting, and you're crying. You don't understand. Hell, just as a fan, I don't get it either. But on your level, it's much more deeper. And my condolences are with you. My thoughts are with you. My father touched, again, millions. He left a lasting imprint on the world and the nation. Even the President of the United States made a statement. That's how amazing your father was. Now can we now all we can do is remember but there are a lot of great memories and his legacy will not be forgotten rest in peace Stuart Scott up there in heaven today you're somewhere out there in the stars or in the blue sky The world would have not the world would not been the same without you. Thank you so much for what you did. You will be missed.